JC here again for RetireCheap.Asia. I'm still in Kochong, but a lot of people out there are going, where the heck is Kochong? Is it in the north? Is it in the south? Is it in the east, the west, the Andaman Sea, the Gulf of Thailand? Where is Kochong? So before I tell you anything more about Kochong or about where to stay, what to do, I got to first show you where Kochong is, right? And different areas that I'm going to be talking about. So check it out. Just to give you an overall idea of where Kochong is in relationship to Pantheya Chonburi, it's off the coast of Trot and it's in the Gulf of Thailand, which makes it nice because you don't have to worry about uh, any tsunamis. And so that's where uh, Kochong is located. And so we'll take a look at uh, all the specific places of Kochong. Okay, so let's do a little orientation on the island of Kochan. Okay, so the ferries come from the mainland of Trat, and they come across to the northern end of Kochan Island. And as you travel down, most of the beaches are located on the west side of the island. So we're going to go down from north to south, and uh, the first major beach is uh, White Sand Beach, but before White Sand Beach, we have this little fishing village here. It's becoming one of the island's main residential areas right in here. Okay, and then as you go down the coastline, you hit White Sand Beach. Now, White Sand Beach is the wildest and busiest beach on the island. Uh, there's a huge choice of rooms, bars, restaurants, um, but it's a bit pricey. So that's white sand beach, and the, as the name reflects, the, the sand is actually white. Then you get Pearl Beach, at Kaimu. At Kaimu. This is a place that's got good snorkeling on this. It's a rocky beach, but it's got good snorkeling. There's a few small resorts and restaurants, and uh, a little bookshop as well there. And as you go further down, you got Chai Chet Cape, on um, Chai Chet. And we've got hotels and shopping plazas as well here, uh, and a nice beach. And then as you go further south, you got Kong Prao. A lot of big uh, new hotels here. But some nice stretches of Underbell Beach as well, along this area. Um, yeah, more on Kong Prao. There's also, uh, uh, let's see, there's also some good seafood restaurants here. Um, there's also some boat trips that go back up in, uh, in a little uh, canal or river uh, to see fireflies there as well. And then you got Cat Bay. Now Cat Bay is a mix of hotels and beach huts. Uh, lots of bars and restaurants. Um, this is sort of a laid back area. It's not quite backpacked, or, but it's close to it. And uh, a lot of night activities, a lot of beer bars, stuff like that. So, uh, High Bay's got a lot of little nightlife activity that's a little lower down, lower down the scale than White Sand Beach. Then you got Lonely Beach. Uh, a lot of backpacker hotels on Lonely Beach. Um, bungalows, beach bungalows. And, but the thing about Lonely Beach is now a lot of upmarket, um, places are moving in to Lonely Beach. And a lot of nighttime partying goes on there as well. Right after there. Bangal here. And this is actually a fishing village down here. Um, it's a sort of a tourist area. It used to be a fishing village on stilts and now it's sort of a, an area where it's become uh, all these little places on stilts have become shops and restaurants and stuff like that. So that's, that's what's going on on the west coast. And so I'll be referring to these as we go down. There's one more that I wanted to mention. Ah, Bailon Bay. Bailon Beach. Here we go. Bailon Bay. Okay, Bailon Bay is a great place to, uh, to hang out as well. Um, again, it's sort of lonely beach, a lot of backpacker places, uh, a lot of little bars, uh, places to hang out. More of a backpacker and lonely beach, I'd say, but uh, not the same. So there you go. There's uh, orientation. It gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. 
and uh, the west, the east coast is not really beach. It's uh, more like where the Thai locals live. So uh, most people don't venture down on the, on the east coast. So there you go. And you get an idea of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about places to see or stay or whatever. Okay, so that was helpful. So the first place I want to talk about is going to be about accommodations. Okay, if you're in a Category 1 budget, you don't have a lot of money to spend on accommodations, which means you're not going to be hanging out on a nice bungalow on the beach because the beaches in Kochong, especially, there's not a big shoreline of sandy beach. So what has happened is those sandy areas, they end up being resorts. And uh, they have bungalows, but they're not going to be cheap bungalows like if you went to an island that has massive amount of beaches and people have just built these little bungalows along the beach. Those would be cheap. But Kochong is not like that. It almost reminds me of a volcanic island like Hawaii um, where it's very rocky and not really mountainous, if you're familiar with mountains, but I'd say hilly. Um, so it drops off quite, uh, quite steeply and it's rocky shores, but there are some sandy beaches. Um, so, but we need to find cheap accommodations for this Category 1 budget uh, rippers, uh, retirees in paradise. So Satong Resort is one place that probably at one time was a really nice place to stay, but it's gotten run down. Um, so it's trashed out, you know, there's bottles and stuff, trash laying around. But you can still find cheap accommodations here. So this is a place that's a, a one-bedroom apartment. And so it's furnished sparsely. So it's got like a little living area with a dining table, a refrigerator, a hallway that you go down, and the hallway leads into a bedroom. And now the bedroom has air conditioning. It's got a fairly large bed, not the best mattress in the world, but a, a, it'll, it'll work. Uh, a little dressing table, free uh, cable TV, not a lot of English speaking channels though, it's great for Thai people though. And, um, and they have free Wi-Fi, now the Wi-Fi is sort of spotty, not exactly strong, but it's free. Now along with this, now this place, it's got a tiled bathroom with hot water. Now this place is going to be about 4,500 baht a month with a 2,000 baht deposit. You're going to pay 6 baht per unit for electricity, 200 baht per person for water. So that's what it costs to live here. This fits into a Category 1 budget. How far are you from the beach? Well, you can go to any beach within 5-10 minutes. Uh, if you want a real sandy beach to go swimming, you're talking about 15 where you can actually 15 minutes where you can actually walk out without having to have little reef shoes or beach shoes, I call them, uh, because it would be rocky. The beach has sandy, uh, sandy bottom. It's going to be about 10 minutes, 15 minutes away. So this fits into a Category 1 budget, and uh, as we travel along, we'll find some more places for you. But I wanted to turn you on to the first one for the Category 1 rippers. So I gotta tell you, if you're in Kochong, the best deal for fresh coffee is, you'll never believe it, is 7-Eleven. They have a coffee stand in here, they grind their own coffee, <clears throat> grind their own coffee, and check out these prices. Hot coffee, espresso, cappuccino, mocha, latte. 30 baht, or 35 baht, and a prop, which is like a shake, is 40 baht. This is the best deal on coffee in Gochon, because everywhere else it's like 70, 80 baht. What a deal. So, I found another place here. Now you gotta scout around, you gotta look, because most of the places are geared up for people coming and going and not staying for a long time. But here's another place, uh, P and Poo House for rent. And uh, these run, the small ones run about 6,000 baht a month. So that's about $200. You get uh, TV, refrigerator, uh, uh, hot water, and free Wi Fi. And they say the Wi Fi is spotty, it's okay. So, uh, Here's another option on a monthly rent for 6,000 baht a month. So 
if you look really hard, you can find some of these places. So we're going we're going up from uh, the cheapest that I find all the way up to uh, you know like the, the first one's going to be category one. Let's see, six, let's see, two hundred. I think this is the edge of category one, category two budgets, and then we'll keep going up to category three. But as you can see, these are actually pretty nice for two hundred dollars a month. I'm always amazed at some of the differences when you live in foreign countries. If you're headed to the beach, which I'm going down this path, we're right there, and you can probably see the water in the background. One of the things that I came across as I was headed to the beach is buffalo hanging out in a little water trough here, cooling themselves and getting a suntan. Check these guys out. Now this is like 50 meters from the beach.